everyone. Welcome to another special edition of Hue at Home. And once again, I'm with mayoral candidate Rana Bakari. Rana, we've already created history here by you just going to City Hall, signing the papers, putting your name in the hunt, in the run, right. with 13 other candidates. Now, I don't know, is it 14? It could be I 15 or Maybe more. 15, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> this but point. the first woman of color. Absolutely. And yeah. you've already done that beforehand, too, mm -hmm. being the first woman of color to run a political party, yeah. the Liberal Party. Yes. So what did you take from that experience to what you're doing now? That's a great question. Um, I, think, I think sometimes, you know, I think leadership to be, let's start with that. Mm -hmm. I think leadership with, leadership itself requires um, self-reflection. Uh, it requires responsibility, uh, you know, so I wouldn't, I would start that by saying, um, you know, there was times where I just didn't know what I didn't know. You mm -hmm. know, I was like 30 something years old, um, you know, it was just a younger time, a different time in my life. Uh, so I think what I've learned through the last seven years um, is more valuable to me than basically that experience and what I learned in that experience to some extent. Now, what I learned from that experience itself was how to, how to do politics, how to run a campaign, uh, how to make sure that we're doing what we have to do, and, and a lot of the policy parts, right? Like to understand um, how different levels of government work, uh, how different levels of government have to cooperate with each other and collaborate with each other. Uh, those are all things that I learned um, at my time during leadership, when I was leader of, of the Liberals. Um, you know, but there is some freedom in, um, and I'm not saying I would never be a part of a party anymore. That's not that's not my thing. I think that every every party has has value. But but what I would say is that, uh, you know, being on your own and not being, um, not being confined to mm -hmm. a party structure uh, is probably the most freeing thing I've ever been a part of in a very long time. So. Uh, when people are seeing that constant grin on my face or uh, me being very light and happy during this campaign throughout the good or the challenges, it's because I feel free. I feel authentic. I feel like I'm able to say what I need to say, do what I need to do, and um, everything, that, every, everything that comes out of my mouth is true, true to me. It aligns with my values. It's exactly who I am. Uh, it's not going to change 10 years from now. I just believe what I'm saying. So uh, that's basically what I learned to be honest with you, is, is how valuable uh, your true authentic self is. How important it is to lead um, knowing exactly who you are and where your boundaries are. Mm -hmm. uh, because especially when we're going to negotiation tables, whether, and I've learned this through my entire law career, when you're, when you're walking into a negotiation table, you need to know exactly who you are and what you're willing to, um, what you're willing to kind of move on. Because uh, if you don't know walking in, you're going, you, you <laughs> fail. Yeah, like to be to be completely blunt, your negotiation fails. Someone has just taken advantage of you, um, and you are no longer the effective leader that you need to be. So, I know that's very long and <laughs> convoluted, but uh, you know what I'm trying to say is that, you know, authenticity is more important than anything else. Uh, walking away from any situation with your integrity intact is more important than anything else, and I. Uh, this campaign, I feel like I'm doing that. Yes, well, no doubt. And you really have to stand your ground, too, as well, because there are so many candidates. Uh, you talked about being your authentic self, mm -hmm. and I think that comes in part with your upbringing. Absolutely. So you are a very, very strong proponent of family. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, and it's written throughout your policies and, and whatever you oh, care about. Oh, it's written about. throughout my own personal history. But, yeah. You know, look, uh, you know, I, the, the, the greatest thing in my life, the absolute greatest thing in my life was the fact that I was born to who I was born to and I was raised the way that I was raised. Because um, at the end of the day, at 45 years old, you know, I'm mm -hmm. 45 in October, there are things um, that are so much more important than, than the noise, mm -hmm. right? So multi-generational families is the way that we live, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's the way that we've always lived. I will continue to live like that until the end of my, my time because um, I just, 
it's what I believe in. Uh, I believe that I, I am, I'm happily and uh, I want to take care of my family. I, I, I want them to feel safe. I want them to know that I'm with them. I want my mom and my, before my dad passed, my dad was with me. That was one of the best things that's ever happened to me, you know. Uh, and I wouldn't change that for a world. And I recognize some people don't don't think that that's the way to do things. But um, again, be true to you, yeah. right? If it's you, if that's the way that you feel good, if that's the way that makes you feel uh, powerful, and you're standing in your own in your own self, do it. But if you don't, don't do it. But ultimately, in the city of Winnipeg, we need to be open to understanding that there are all different kinds of people in the city. Uh, we live in all different kinds of ways. So. Um, you know, just talking about policy, you know, it's, it's struggle, it's struggling to say, okay, well, we can't, we have to only build up and we can't build out. And I, I understand, I, I'm very, um, you know, aware of the, of the reasons why we say those things. Uh, but when we talk like that, you know, we're, we're not really including the diverse nature of the people who live in this city, because there are a lot of people who live in the city who just due to cultural and where they came from are not comfortable. They are like they will never want to be in any other place other than suburbia, basically. <laughs> you know, and I say that with respect yeah. uh, because that's just the way that they that's the way that they measure their success. That's the me way that they measure that they've made it in Canada. So, so there's just a whole host of things. But family is everything, and and I, I commend anyone in, in this life who. Uh, who who looks at their family and understands that it's a critically important thing. But I also respect people who just don't have that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot mm -hmm. of people in this world who just don't have that. So I, I want to acknowledge this entire conversation by saying I am very lucky yes. to be able to have these words about my, my family where there's a lot of people who don't have that. Yes. And you're also a big proponent for mental health. And Lord knows that we've all mm. been through you know, a big, big uh, pandemic and COVID is still yeah. looming and everything like that. Um, how have you handled, I guess, your own mental health? Yeah, that was, that was, I mean, people, uh, you know, it, to put this in perspective, you know, my dad suddenly died January of 2021 and mm -hmm. uh, we weren't even functioning by the time March came around. And, and that's just not me, that's my entire family. Like we were grieving um, by the time the COVID lockdown came on. So um, I think what saved, and, I don't, and I, when I say saved our life, but I mean kept us intact, uh, kept us in whole, kept us, you know, proceeding. And even if it was slow and steady, moving on and, and, and um, you know, finding all the beauty in life again. Uh, and that came from the fact that, you know, we we had support in my house because all my family was together. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't the person who wasn't seeing my parent, my mom, you know, once a month. I mm -hmm. literally woke up and my entire family mm -hmm. was there. So, uh, and again, it was the greatest blessing that I ever, I've ever had. And uh, it's, it's hard and I encourage people to seek, to seek the resources, seek the help uh, when it's just not enough. And, mm -hmm. you know, there are times where we have to take really uh, important steps for our, our own mental health and uh, that there's no shame in that there there's so much power in that yeah you know there's so is. much power in taking control over that uh, yourself and um and i guess the other part that i believe is really important for mental health um is acknowledging the fact that not everyone can say the words not mm -hmm. everyone can can tell you what they need because sometimes they don't know themselves so um, it's also watching over your friends and your family you know, and uh, if you're seeing sudden changes or drastic changes, or frankly, if you just see something that you feel that um, mm -hmm. you might want to question, you know, life is short, question it. Yeah. You know, show people that you're there, show them that kindness, show them that love, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're all, we're all in it together, so. Yes, no, we are. I know that the big question is, what will you do in the next 100 days when you're mayor? My first 100 days, um, that's a great question, and I haven't had an opportunity to answer that yet. And I think I'm still reflecting on it, but I think mm -hmm. the, there's two things for sure that I know. Um, number one is um, uh, I want to just do a very intense review of all the policies that are in place right now, I think, to make sure that they are 
um, you know, through, a, through an intersectional lens. Um, I think that we need to start to review all of our policies and procedures uh, through an equality lens. So I'm, I want to do it through an intersectional lens uh, to make sure that we are uh, providing services in a, in a, in a fair and um, you know, equitable way and an equal way. That's the one part. Uh, the second part is, um, you know, we have the North End treatment issue that I want to take care of. I want the the law the, the the lawsuit against police headquarters to continue. Um, I really still question why other mayoral candidates somehow seem to not want to pursue that. Uh, if I was a Winnipegger, I would question that. Why why do you not want justice? Mm -hmm. Like why do you not want to stand up for taxpayers? Like what's the <laughs> what's the holdup? What's the holdup and what is it? You know, mm -hmm. and you know, or explain it. Mm -hmm. You know, explain it because I, I, even as a lawyer, I question. That makes me question a lot of things. So, um, and I think we should all proceed uh, to fill this role with integrity and honesty, and um, not with "you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours" kind of mentality. And you know, that's always a big worry for me when people don't proceed to do the right thing. Um, so yeah, so the first hundred days will be that, and uh, for sure, without a doubt. Um, making sure that I'm having um, very important, collaborative, um, you know, open meetings uh, with the Premier of the time, um, which, I mean, will be mm -hmm. Premier Stephenson uh, and uh, our federal counterparts, ministers or whoever else is, uh, depending on which issue we're dealing with. I know. So, I mean, it is all three levels, right? It has and to be. Yes. Um, and, well, <coughs> and then uh, the, the second thing, without a doubt, uh, probably one of the first top three things I will be doing is meeting with First Nations leadership, Indigenous mm -hmm. leadership, uh, <clears throat> to to ensure that um, you know we are including their voices um, mm -hmm. and again through that lens to ensure that uh, we're taking care, we're 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 doing the right thing, you know uh, yes. whether that's for the lands and the waters, uh, whether that is for the safety of of um, Indigenous women and girls and Two Spirit peoples. Um, whatever it is, I just need to know, and I need to be. We need to be in constant communication. Yes. Um, and I, I really, you know, I'm committed to doing that. Wow. Well, you have a lot of conversations <laughs> to start. Yeah. And yeah. An incredible plan. And uh, fingers crossed, we'll be waiting. Well, if we do it, we're making history, right? Yes, all the way. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Rana. Thank, thank you for taking this time. Thanks. What's up? Ooh, say what, 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 say